Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. I am Franchi Pearson, and welcome to my channel. It is November 7, November 7th of 2024. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday. Boy, time is flying. I tell you, we had that election, and I don't even know what day it is, right? It's 8.59 in the p.m., however. Let's say it together. Praise our God from whom our blessings flow. People, let me say this from the outset. Trump is going through transition. Yes. He chose his first uh, person today, right? Uh, longtime friend and associate, uh, Susan Wiles. But Lord, but, but God knows, Lord knows, <laughs> Lord knows there are some transitions that are happening almost like the speed of light. You know, the Bible says that in the end, there'll be a lot of times, a lot of uh, end time revelations and things that we really haven't seen before, we put it in layman's terms. Time, undoubtedly, unquestionably so, is sped up. And the news, I tell you, the news is no different. The Bible says when they say peace, peace, sudden destruction, right? You know that Trump spoke with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. I believe it was yesterday or the day that he won. It must have been yesterday because, yeah, so when... Trump won the election on the 5th. On the 6th, I believe, the president of Israel, President uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, called uh, Trump, and uh, they spoke. Well, you know, there's a big war going over there in, um, in Israel, right? And Trump, from the, videos, from the videos I've been creating, it's, it's his war now. And again, the Bible says when they say peace, peace, sudden destruction. It should put you on the edge of your mental seat. Because Jesus better come on, right? <laughs> look, look, people, you know your Bible just as well as I do. And also somebody else who I can't name, and I can't name the country, but you can Google it. Somebody else... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, spoke to Trump also or told him congratulations. And he said, this is the start of a new world order. Did you hear me? I said, somebody either called or talked to Trump. And uh, there's somebody else out there. And there's some serious stuff going on out here. And this person said, and when I say this person, this person is a big kahuna. He runs a big country. And there's been a lot of stuff going on overseas. I can't mention his name because I get in trouble, but I'm sure you can figure out who he is. He runs a country, a big country. And he said there's a new world order coming. Just Google it. People, you know, I, I got to come to grips with it. Like you. I don't like it, but it's prophecy, man. It's Ezekiel 38. That's another clue in relation to the person who spoke today. Some going to be jumping off, people. I don't know. It, it might be this year, next year, but some's about to jump off. And like I said, we're praying for this man. But it's a tug of war. And man, I, <laughs> I can't look at this thing with physical eyes because if I do, what I'm telling you is that it appears we're losing this thing. So I got to look at it by faith and just ask the Lord to protect us. If you guys knew what I knew, and some of you guys probably know, you'd be like, look, Pearson, <sighs> let, me just, let me just hasten on. Trump's chief of staff. Susie Wiles. This stuff that went down the day with him picking her, it is a very peculiar thing because the numbers in relation to what went down, let's get on with it.
big role in Trump's plans to radically transform the federal government. And thank you for joining us. The Trump transition is now underway, and there's breaking news tonight. The president-elect named the first member of his White House staff. Susie Wiles, his trusted campaign manager, will become his chief of staff, the first woman to hold the position. That means she'll play a big role in Trump's plans to radically transform the federal government. And Trump is already floating other familiar names to fill key roles, including Elon Musk and Robert F. Kennedy Jr. At the White House today, President Biden underscored this will be a peaceful transfer of power. CBS's Robert Costa spoke to... And before we go any further, I want you to know this man here, he talked about, again, the soul of America. I want you guys to understand, I did a lot of videos on that. He ain't talking about the regular soul, in my humble opinion. The Roman Empire had a sun god. I want you to look it up. Roman sun god. This is what I believe he's talking about, people. I did a few videos on it. When this man says soul of America, this is that other guy, like Ra. All right, I digress, I'm sorry. Let's go back and listen to um, our new chief of staff, who, by the way, they put in a powder blue, remind me like a Tiffany blue. So Catherine, let's start with this, uh, this appointment. Who is Susan Wiles? What is significant about her becoming chief of staff at the White House? She has been, uh, Terry, on this uh, campaign since the beginning as one of the leaders of uh, Donald Trump's campaign. She is known inside the campaign as uh, somebody who is in the background, is quiet during meetings, doesn't raise her voice, uh, really attempts to facilitate uh, all of the right people being around. Uh, the president uh, elect. So that's essentially what she's known for. And she's honestly going to be the uh, best uh, or the uh, first woman White House chief of staff. I think that's important. I think she is the first woman White House chief of staff. And many Republicans, in Republican circles, there's been chatter that she would be the best pick for this job. Of course, uh, there's all sorts of jockeying, lots of back and forth, but it's significant and it's sending, at least what the Trump transition team is trying to do, is send a message that by uh, appointing Susie, the chief of staff, the next chief of staff in the White House, that uh, somebody who's been in politics for a long time, uh, they want to... All right, so yeah, she's been around. She helped Governor DeSantis. She's helped Trump in the past and a few other people. Let's get into that and then we'll get into these numbers because they're, they're deep people. They're, they're really deep experience. When Rick Scott first wanted to come to Florida and was an unknown, he called up Susie Wiles. Susie Wiles became the campaign manager for Rick Scott and led to his first victory. Also, you may remember in 2016, Donald Trump turned to her for Florida and she turned out a very important victory in Florida. After that, when Governor DeSantis wanted to be elected governor of Florida, his campaign was kind of in trouble. He turned to Susie Wiles. Susie Wiles helped him get elected. And in 2020, Donald Trump turned to her once again in Florida, and she ran a pretty big margin. Susie Wiles, I can remember when she first called me back in 2015. She's part of our faculty at the Public Policy Institute that Donald Trump had first called her the very first time. So she became a part of that team, and she was very complimentary of him, saying he's not like the public image. And in 2015, she told me he's going to be the next president of the United States. Susie's style is a fairly quiet style. She doesn't seek the limelight. She sits in the background. She has a calming influence. I think... But she got the juice. What if I told you she's just like Trump, according to the numbers? Watch this bizarre decode. This is her right here, Susie Wiles. You guys probably remember her. Her dad is Pat Summerall. Remember the announcer for football? I'll show you him in a little bit. Pat Summerall is her dad. Trump's very fond of him. But look at her date of birth. This is a very bizarre. I looked at that and it blew my mind. She was born May 14th of 1957. Do you know what May 14th is? Well, for those of you all who don't know, Israel became a nation on May 14th. 
talk about coincidence or what? Remember I said peace, peace and sudden destruction. Her birthday, her next birthday is 5-14-2025. She attracted from the day that Kamala did a concession speech, which was yesterday, 11 6 of 2024, right? Look at the difference. It's 189 days. Now, why is that important? Watch this. The 189th day of the year is July 8th. July 8th is the 189th day of the year. Why is July 8th important, Pearson? That's 7 8. 7 8. Donald Trump is 78 years old. Just hold tight. Watch this. See, her responsibilities include leading teams, easily communications, and uniting people across organizations to keep them moving forward. These multi-challenged professionals are often the right hand to other top-tier executives, including presidents, heads of departments, and chief executive officers. She got a big job. She's the go-between, basically, right? Now look at this here. Remember I told you her birthday matches? May 14th, 1948, Israel became a nation. What are the odds you pick a chief of staff and she got the same birthday as Israel? Come on, man. Come on. Ain't that deep? Now look at this. Her birthday, May 14th, 2024. She chapter from today's date, 10-7 of 2023. I'm sorry, let's go back. Her birthday just passed, May 14th, 2024. Israel got attacked by Hamas on October 7th, 2023. Speaking of Israel, right? What's the difference? Seven months and eight days. Did you see that? Seven, eight. I just showed you a 7 8, didn't I? Is that a mind blower? Israel got attacked that day, and then this is the day of her birthday, 7 8. Don't ask me what's going on, I'm just reporting. I'm just reporting. July 8th, 189th day of the year. That's all I can tell you, baby. It's coming out. But watch this here. 11-7 is today. She attracted from inauguration day, January 20th of 2025. What's the difference? The difference is 75 days. All right, what does 75 mean? Watch this. March 16th is the 75th day of the year. That's 316. Sacrifice. I see WW3 coming. That's what I see. It's the opposite of what Christ did. Christ saved us, John 3.16. But this, this, this 3.16, if you notice, a lot of my videos coming up 3.16. But wait, watch this. Look at her name. Remember I told you her, her dad, Pat Summerall is the name. Her name is Susie Summerall Wiles. In reduction, it comes out to 75. And I just showed you that 75 comes out to... March 16th, 316. Sacrifice. That's deep, ain't it? And here's her dad, Pat Summerall's. Nah. We're going to take his birthday, May 10th, 1930. If you take May 10th, May 10th, and he had a birthday in 2023, subtracted from today's date where his daughter was just Promoted, the difference is 78 weeks in one day. There's that 78 again. Unbelievable, isn't it? Now, I want to show you guys something in relation to the video I did earlier. It's a continuation. When I got done with this video here, and I appreciate you guys watching it, Baron Trump, Donald Trump, Tesla, John Trump and Lockwood. 
This is a man blower. Please just share it. It's a man blower. I have connected all these people like cracking a cold. Well, guess what? I think I did mention Elon Musk, but Elon Musk is in relation to this. Watch this. His Elon Musk birthday. Elon Musk is uh, the modern day, if you want to uh, say that, uh, Nikola Tesla. Tes Tesla. June 28, 1971. Now look at this. Tesla's birthday, July 10th, 1856. He died January 7th, 1943. January 7th. Okay, January 7th, 2024, had a birthday earlier. Tesla, Nikola Tesla. Subtracted from um, 628, 2023. That's a birthday, dealing with Elon. The difference is six months, one week, four, four days. What is 614? Trump was born June 14th. How is that possible? Here's Barron again, Trump's son. March 20th, 2006 is his birthday. March 20th, 2024, his last birthday, Barron, Trump's son. Subtracted from Elon's Birthday coming up next year, 628, 2025. Difference is 6, 6, and 3. Double 6 and 3. Then, John G. Trump, who was sent to Nikolai Tesla's apartment to find out if he had uh, cracked the code on time and space, bending time and space, which I do believe that he has it, although they say he didn't have it. This is Trump's uncle, John Trump. His birthday, August 21st, death date, February 21st. So, here's his birthday, anniversary, August 21st, 2024. Subtracted from Elon Musk's birthday, coming up next year, 628, 2025. The difference is 444. Four, four. If you take the four and four, you get eight. Four is left, that's August 4th. Who was born August 4th? Barack Obama, is that coincidence? And then here's the man who wrote this book about Barron. Like I said, check out the last video. All of it's in there. It's a lot of information. This is his birthday, August 2nd, 1841. He died September 30th, 1918. So let's look at what we got here. Uh, August 2nd, we will go with that because August 2nd, 1841 is his birthday. So if we take August 2nd and bring it up to 2024, since people are questioning what I do, the relevant year is that, subtracted from Elon Musk's next birthday, 628 or 2025, the difference, people, is 47 weeks in one day. Trump just became the 47th president. When you put all this together, it's deep, y'all. It's exhausting, too, ain't it? It's exhausting. And here's the book that he wrote, The Baron Trump Collection. Check out the last video, people. I am done for the night. Let me see here. And I am recommending this video here. She'll talk about the author, which is Ingersoll Lockwood. He wrote the book on Trump, on, on Baron Trump and this time travel stuff. It's deep, baby. It's deep. And someone recommended this lady. I saw her video earlier, but I didn't watch it until you guys recommended it, so I appreciate it. Uh, her name is Really Graceful. Listen to this part about the author. Ingersoll Lockwood was an American lawyer and writer based in New York. His father was a military man and close friend of Henry Clay, a U.S. representative, senator, speaker of the House, and secretary of state, who helped found the National Republican Party and Whig Party. Henry Clay's nickname was the Great Compromiser, the master of the art of the deal for his time. Apparently, Ingersoll Lockwood was a big fan of Clay, too. 
because he wrote a poem for Clay adorning him with the Lockwood last name and referring to him as a brother. Both Clay and Ingersoll Lockwood are on record as Freemasons, which I only bring up in connection to the occult elements throughout their lives. Yeah, that's big because I asked the question, I've been asking the question, how are all these numbers coming out? Masonic, Masonic, Masonic. People, I said in the last video I did, only a God could make those numbers happen that I did in this video. Only a God. If you do have the time, <coughs> check out this video or watch it in bits and pieces. <coughs> the number connections are astounding. They're astounding. And all I can tell you is this. Only a dark God, a God that rivals our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, can make this happen. It's got to be in conjunction with the fallen angels. Yes, the serpent children. There's no way in the world this stuff is coming out. It's AI wrapped up in all that. It's all wrapped up together. My name is Friend Shot Pearson. Just wanted to get this out the way. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. God bless you. Please, I'm hiccuping. I apologize. Please just support the channel. Thumbs up. You can help out in any way. I'll put it in the description. Also, a P.O. box. God bless you. I'm exhausted. Just mentally, I am. This is one day where I can say I'll never forget. It's something else, people. Please. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. It's time to get right. Because I'm telling you, it feels like we're losing this war. He just got elected. But these powers... These powers are moving. They're, they're moving. It's a tug of war like I did in yesterday's video. They're moving. And like I said, he'll change at some point. But I pray we can get something out of this man. We can sustain this country. That's all I want to do is sustain it. Get some policies out there. And we pray and we do our part as well. God bless you.